The other day, I found this belt hiding at the back of my sock drawer. I hadn't seen it for years, but it brought up a lot of emotion for me because this was the belt that I wore every day when I lost 21 kg back in 2018. And I still remember that feeling each time I could move down a notch and tighten the belt a bit. It meant I was making progress and it meant I wasn't going crazy. And that was huge for me because I'd struggled with my weight for a few years before that. I'd tried most of the popular diets, but nothing had really worked for me. So to see real progress gave me so much relief and it really motivated me to keep going. And finding it the other day, being reminded of that feeling inspired me to make this video because I want you to have that feeling too. So what I've done is devise a simple three-step blueprint that you can use to burn belly fat and drop a belt notch before Christmas. And today, I'm gonna to take you through it. By the way, if you don't know who I am, my name's Doug. And ever since I lost that weight back in 2018, I've been a personal trainer and a nutritionist, helping hundreds of guys to get into the best shape of their life. Step one is to know your numbers, because however you're going to do this, you need to make sure that you're actually in a calorie deficit. A calorie deficit is where you're eating fewer calories than you're burning, forcing your body to burn the stored fat as fuel. But for you to actually create a calorie deficit, the very first thing we need to do is calculate what we call your maintenance calorie number. And as the name would suggest, this is the number of calories that you would want to eat if you just wanted to stay at the same weight and body fat percentage. The quickest way to calculate that is to take your body weight in pounds and multiply it by 14. But that won't give you a precise number because your maintenance calorie number is unique to you. It's based on your age, your weight, your height, your sex, and how active your lifestyle is. So if you want a more precise number, scroll down, click the link in the description that's underneath this video, use my completely free calorie calculator, and I'll send you a precise calorie target. It's only gonna take you 30 seconds, so if you wanna pause the video and do that right now, go ahead. Okay, once we know your maintenance calorie number, now we can create your deficit. Now at this stage, what most fitness influencers tell you to do is to subtract 500 calories from your maintenance number and eat that many calories every day. And the reason that they say that is because if you eat 500 calories fewer every day for seven days for one week, you're going to lose one pound of fat. And simply put, that's because there's 3,500 calories in a pound of fat and 500 multiplied by seven for the seven days in a week is 3,500. Now, a pound of fat might not sound like much, but this is what a pound of fat actually looks like. As you can see, pretty significant. In fact, it's about the same size as my head. Now, I do agree that losing a pound of fat a week is sustainable, but this isn't the approach that I advise my clients to take. And that's because I think it's flawed for two reasons. Firstly, because it doesn't give you any room for failure. There's no flexibility. It assumes you act and live like a robot and that every day is gonna be the same. But we know that life isn't like that. Whether it's a stressful job, your partner, kids, traffic jams, train delays, sickness, hangovers, you name it, the list goes on and on. And secondly, because it requires you to be pretty restrictive with your food. Eating 500 calories less every single day is like cutting out an entire meal. I don't want you to do that. I want you to be fueled. I want you to be energized. So this is what I suggest my clients do instead. Firstly, we're gonna take your calorie deficit number. Let's say, for example, it's 2000 calories a day. Then what we're gonna do is multiply it by seven for the seven days in a week. So that would be 14,000. And now what you've got is a weekly calorie allowance, a budget if you like. And just like how you manage your money, now you can decide how you spend your calories on a weekly basis rather than day to day, which not only gives you a lot more freedom and flexibility, but it gives you room for error. You can plan ahead, which is always a good thing to do. And more importantly, you can make up for high calorie days with low calorie days. It means you don't have to be perfect every single day. What most of my clients do is front load their low calorie days at the start of the week, Monday to Thursday. And that means they have space to have higher calorie days at the weekend. And this system is fantastic because let's say you mess up on a Wednesday. It means that you're not immediately going to that, oh no, I've messed up, diet starts again, Monday mentality. And secondly, rather than just suggesting that you cut out an entire meal and sacrifice 500 calories every single day, 
I'm going to suggest that you eat 250 calories less and move 250 calories more. Because if we move more, if we live a more active lifestyle, we actually increase our maintenance calorie number. And that means you're attacking your deficit from both sides. Most importantly, you're still creating that 500 calorie daily deficit that you need to lose a pound of fat a week. And that takes us nicely on to step two which is to prioritize daily movement. But this doesn't mean that you need to spend two hours in the gym every day doing crazy HIIT workouts. Going to the gym and specifically lifting weights is obviously fantastic for your physical and your mental health. And of course, I'm a huge advocate for it, but we shouldn't be going to the gym to burn fat because you don't sweat fat out. That's just water leaving your body. You actually breathe fat out. We should be going to the gym to get fitter, stronger, and healthier. Because even if you train like Arnold Schwarzenegger for three hours a day, six days a week, you would only be spending 10% of your week in the gym. I don't train like that and neither do any of my clients. In fact, I give most of them three 45 minute workouts to do a week. And that means they're spending less than 2% of their week in the gym. So do you see what I'm saying? What you do out of the gym is far more important than what you do in it. To lose fat, we wanna focus on living a more active lifestyle. So take the stairs rather than the elevators, walk or cycle to work rather than driving, run around with your kids, clean your house, have more with your partner, the possibilities are endless, but you don't need to overcomplicate this. The best thing that you can do is simply to walk more. Let me break this down for you to show you how easy it actually is. It takes about eight minutes to walk a thousand steps, which means you can do 8,000 steps in just over an hour. Eight times eight minutes is 64 minutes. And if you do just 8,000 steps a day, you'll burn an additional 250 calories, maybe even more. And that's why you only need to eat 250 calories less a day to create that 500 calorie deficit. This is a former client of mine, Paul. He's in his mid forties. He's got a very busy job, two kids and a wife. And he lost 30 pounds in just three months on my coaching program. Yes, he was in a calorie deficit and yes, he was doing two to three workouts a week from home. But a big part of his transformation was his walking. But it gets better because walking doesn't just help you with weight loss. In fact, I think my favorite thing about walking is the powerful and positive effects that it has on your mindset. And that's because it activates your parasympathetic nervous system, which is the part of your nervous system which helps you to relax. Have you ever wondered why you suddenly feel less stressed and even more creative when you get outside and go for a walk. That's your parasympathetic nervous system kicking in because changing your environment, getting outside, getting some fresh air and maybe even some sunlight, you can't see what it's doing for you on the outside. But trust me, it is doing wonders for you on the inside. Use it as an opportunity to listen to an audiobook or a podcast. Stick on a playlist, phone your mum, or you could even switch your Zoom meetings to walking meetings. And here's the thing, not all of your walking has to be purposeful. You'll do 2,000 steps a day just existing, whether it's commuting to work, doing the grocery shopping, playing with your kids, or just walking around the house. So really, all you need to consciously think about is 6,000 steps a day. And that's a 45 minute walk in the morning with a coffee to wake you up, or 45 minutes at the end of the day to relax and de-stress. Building on this, step three is to lock in daily non-negotiables. Because, and this might trigger a few people, Losing weight isn't complicated. Just live by these five words. Simple things done well consistently. Because the challenge isn't in what you have to do, it's in doing it consistently. You don't need to stop eating your favorite food, sacrifice your social life, or give up your family time. But this will require some change and some compromise. Number one is your daily movement, those 8,000 steps that we just spoke about. Number two is drinking enough water. Now listen, I am 100% sure that I'm not the first man in the world to tell you to drink more water. But a lot of people still struggle with it. And I think that's for two reasons. Number one is that they're just not focused on it. But the second reason, no one's ever actually taken the time to explain why drinking more water and staying hydrated is so beneficial. But water is like your body's secondary energy system. Think of the calories that you eat as the fuel that you put in your car. But think of the water as the oil that you put in it to make sure that it doesn't break down. Every single cell in your body requires water to function correctly. That's how important it is. And dehydration can cause big problems. It affects your energy levels, your mental clarity, and even your ability to stick to your diet. But what most people don't realize is just how sensitive our brains are 
to dehydration. Because if you become just one to 2% dehydrated, your brain starts to shut down non-essential processes and systems in your body. And what that looks like in reality is you become lethargic. And we all know how that feels. Suddenly, the idea of lying on the sofa, in your pants, eating Cheetos, watching Netflix for eight hours a day becomes very appealing. But as a result of that Netflix binge, you get less done. And when you get less done, you burn fewer calories. But in contrast to that, if you can keep yourself hydrated, you're gonna have all day energy, mental clarity, focus, and probably most importantly, drive. So your next question might be, how much water should I be drinking then? Well, to be honest, when most people ask me this, the answer I give them, even though it might come across a little bit facetious is, more. But saying that, a good number to aim for is about three liters a day. And if that isn't enough motivation for you, let me tell you about another sneaky benefit that staying hydrated gives you. When you drink water, it fills your stomach. And when your stomach is full, the walls of the stomach are expanded. And when that happens, a signal is sent up through your body to your brain, telling it that you are full. So on top of giving you more energy, mental focus, clarity, drive, and all that other stuff, Drinking more water is actually gonna kill your hunger. And then the third daily non-negotiable that you wanna lock in is to get yourself to bed on time. Sleep might not be sexy, but it's so important and so underrated when it comes to losing weight, particularly around your midsection. When you don't get enough sleep, it messes with your hunger hormones, specifically leptin and ghrelin. Ghrelin is your hunger hormone. It tells your brain, hey, let's eat. But counter to that, leptin is the hormone that tells you, we're full, we're good. But here's the problem. When you're low on sleep, your ghrelin goes up and your leptin goes down. That combo makes you feel more hungry and less satisfied, leading you to overeat. And listen, I don't need to tell you, we all know how easy it is to reach for those high calorie snacks when we're tired, right? Bad sleep also spikes your cortisol, which is your stress hormone. And high cortisol has a direct link to fat storage, particularly around your belly. When cortisol levels are high, your body wants to hold on to extra water and extra fat. So by getting good sleep, you can keep your cortisol levels in check and make it easier on your body to let go of that belly fat. But I'm not done because I'm afraid poor sleep also messes with your metabolism. When you're sleep deprived, your body struggles to process carbs effectively. And this can lead to spikes in blood sugar and more fat storage. But when you're well rested, your metabolism stays on track. And listen, let's be honest, everything just feels easier when you get a few good nights sleeps, doesn't it? More energy, focus, clarity, strength, and most importantly, happiness. So to improve your sleep, we need to consider three things. How long you're sleeping, how well you're sleeping, and how regularly you're sleeping. The regularity is the easiest of the three, so let's box that off quickly. The science shows that if you go to bed and wake up at roughly the same time every day, give or take 60 minutes, let's say, that you're gonna sleep better and wake up feeling more rested. So do that. To improve the quality of your sleep, we need to optimize your sleep environment. So you want your bedroom to be as cold, dark, quiet, and well ventilated as possible. So get yourself an Amazon and add these three things to your shopping cart. Blackout blinds, a fan, and earplugs. None of these are gonna break the bank, but they're gonna make a huge difference to the quality of your sleep. And lastly, to make sure that you're getting enough sleep, we need to focus on your wind down routine. And this is where it comes back to setting that bedtime alarm. Now, the time that you set your bedtime alarm for is gonna depend on the time that you wanna wake up in the morning. You wanna work backwards from that. So let's say, for example, you wanna wake up at 7 a.m. That means you wanna be going to sleep, not getting into bed, but actually going to sleep at 11 p.m. later to try and get a full eight hours sleep. So in that instance, the latest that I would set your bedtime alarm for is 10 p.m. And also, I'd recommend that you follow the three, two, one rule, where you stop eating three hours before you go to bed, you stop drinking two hours before you go to bed, and you come off all your screens, whether it's TVs, laptops, or phones, an hour before you go to bed. Eating is a metabolic process, and metabolic processes raise your heart rate. But obviously, when we are going to sleep, we want our heart rate at a resting level. It takes time for your body to break down and digest your food. So give it that time. And obviously, if you are drinking water right up to the point where you're going to sleep, you're far more likely to wake up in the night and have disturbed sleep because you need to go to the bathroom. So if you cut it off two hours before bed, 
you're probably going to sleep better. And the screens, which we're all addicted to, if we can come off of them an hour before bed, well, that's going to help our body to produce more melatonin, which is our sleep hormone. Because these screens, whether it's the laptops, the phones, the TVs, they prevent the production of melatonin. So there you have it, the simple three-step blueprint that you need to burn belly fat and drop a belt notch before Christmas. Use the calculator that I've given you access to. Remember, it's the link in the description under the video and get yourself into that deficit. Prioritize your daily movement, make sure you're drinking enough water and get yourself to bed on time. Do those three things and do them consistently and this is gonna be easy for you. But let me say this before I leave you today because it's important. I have 100% confidence that when you start doing these three things, you'll see progress and you'll see it fast. But after a few weeks, that progress will slow down. Do not deviate from the plan. The hardest part is when you know you are doing everything right, but the progress stalls. You feel like you deserve more than what you're getting and you crave that progress, that instant gratification. And listen, I've seen it before, I'll see it again. In that moment, you'll be tempted to change everything. Don't, just keep going, stay the course. And above all, remember, simple things done well consistently. Best of luck and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss my next video. Cheers.